Hello everybody and welcome to uh, this presentation. We're going to be discussing uh, the topic of financial maths for a junior cycle higher level class. So today what we're going to do is we're going to look through the learning outcomes for this proposed lesson, the various cross-curricular links that could occur, the look at the proposed lesson that you know I, I, I would teach for this, and then at the end recap on the learning outcomes and uh, recap on the plan to see what on. So the topic we're going to look at today is the area of taxation um, and within that we're actually going to look more specifically on the area of income tax um, so the learning outcomes for this such class we're going to obviously have to re we're going to revise percentages and decimals uh, this is something the students would have already covered in probably more likely first year if they use common uh, syllabus uh, would have used in first year as I said um, and probably haven't seen since so we'll do a quick recap on that because that plays a fairly crucial part of the whole thing we look at uh, some of the main terms that are used to and this is important to uh, develop the students vocabulary using keywords uh, for them to actually expand which is part of the new uh, junior cycle with their keywords and there's your literacy as well uh, using exact look gonna go and find examples of the above terms and calculate the net pay of an employee one thing beforehand we're going to look at why we learn about financial maths it's a significant area of the syllabus okay which is going to come up quite a bit it was just come up quite a bit in the junior search but apart from that let's look at a wider uh, set of things also sorry from a teaching point of view there's a lot of scope for using this uh, the key skills in this topic uh, okay um, the key skills such as communicating working with others managing information but we'll go through them as we're going through the lesson let's go across curricular links which we're going to go through in a second but it's a very very practical um, topic for students uh, Hopefully all the students will go out and get a job in the future and uh, therefore will have their own pay slips and will have to calculate their own income in the future. Uh, okay, their own tax I should say in the future. So, let's look at the cross-curricular links. Um, from a literacy point of view, as I said already, there's lots of new words in this, lots of new acronyms, uh, a lot of new things for students to understand, and a lot of new keywords for their keywords notebook um, as well. From a numeracy point of view, obviously there's the whole maths involved, the multiplication and division, uh, sorry, multiplication and addition and subtraction regarding uh, income tax. Uh, and then in terms of cross curricular with other subjects, students that study uh, business studies at junior cycle uh, will be very familiar with this topic, uh, especially in the chapter of income, uh, where they would actually have already calculated um, a person's net pay. There also will be uh, come across stuff, uh, it's not on the slide there, but in CSP, uh, when we discuss the various tax rates for PAYE and that they're announced by the Minister of Finance on budget day. So that will link in with the uh, Unit 5 of the CSP syllabus democracy. Going into the lesson here now, okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is going to revise your percentages, as I said, in the learning outcomes. So I've taken some clips here across the next few slides from various textbooks. Initially, as you can see, just the basic idea, converting decimals to a percentage, just get the students back into the idea of things. Then I've taken some slightly wordy questions there, because the problem with the with these taxation questions in financial maths is that they are very wordy. There is a lot of text in them, so it's very important that students get used to the idea of grabbing the you know the, the information they need out of the text. So you can see here, I've I've given just a couple of questions for them to practice on. Then we get into the actual mati subject matter. So we look at the difference between wages versus salaries. Two key words to them there for their keywords notebook. Um, and it's you know whilst they don't need to know that def you know the difference for their junior search exam, uh, it's good general knowledge for them to have. Looking at the idea of gross pay versus net pay, students of uh, business studies would be familiar with this. Those that wouldn't would not be. But also it's a good information for them to have to understand the difference between the two. Next, we move on to uh, the idea of statutory deductions. Um, now, this is something you could actually get them to do a think pair share exercise on, possibly, or maybe some pair work or group work on to figure out what is a statutory deduction and to think of some examples of it. And that's where you can get your higher and lower order questioning into uh, with this part as well. Um, we move on into, uh, as he gives some examples of statutory deductions, what they are, what they mean, and what are they actually used for. So there's plenty of scope here for getting class involved in this. Uh, and th but that way you're using the key skills the students are communicating, they're going to be working with others and their pairs and their groups, there's the managing information. So there's a lot of scope for different key skills to be used in this part of the lesson. Once again, 
voluntary or non-statutory deductions you, exp you know can help them to explain what it is and once again get the students as well to brainstorm of various examples of what a voluntary deduction uh, it could or could be okay so then after we've done that the, the, the key thing with this is that they're you're challenging the students to figure out their you realize the information they already know that we as teachers are not feeding it to them the whole time that they the students themselves are building on their prior knowledge so moving on to the paye section um we explain to the students that there are two different le uh, rates there's the lower rate and the higher rate and you've got your standard rate cut off and the little graph I have here uh, on the slide shows the students that, for example, a person in this example earns fifty thousand euro with a standard cutoff rate of thirty thousand. Has the first thirty thousand taxed twenty percent, and then uh, which is marked in blue there in the graph, and this following twenty thousand is taxed, which is marked in red, is taxed at forty one percent. Now it's important to remember that these uh, percentages change may change year on year, uh, depending on what's announced in the budget in October. And once again, there's your cross curricular links with your business and your CSPE. So you then explain to them as well what tax credits are and what tax payable is. So more keywords, more new vocabulary for them. It's important they understand all this. Uh, and then you go into the actual mathematics of um, a question. So you can see yourself here is a little uh, sample question solution that I've taken out from a textbook. Um, you can see yourself it's a very, very wordy question. Um, but it's important by taking the important parts out. Now, you can see here that this is a reasonably easy style question, as that it doesn't, it only gives you one. Here you've got your PAY at 20% uh, in the question, uh, and you've got your voluntary deduction of your health insurance premium uh, and a tax credit. So you don't have any PRSI, you don't have any USC, and you've only one rate of PAYE. So we've got the whole um, solution worked out under uh, at the bottom half of the page there. Naturally, you may choose to do that on the whiteboard instead. Uh, I've given it in a second example here uh, which includes your standard rate cutoff point and your lower rate and your higher rate of PAYE um, so it's a slightly more challenging example there and it's such like a building block and you're building from the found you know, as if you're building from the foundation up so you're adding on a little piece each time now at the end of the lesson naturally enough you should always recap on the learning outcomes so that the students themselves can see and set them as benchmarks to what they achieved and be aware of what they have learnt leaving that classroom. It's very important that we realise what the students actually has learnt in that class. And test the students, you know, quiz the students I should say to see if they understand what's actually gone through in that class. So if we I'm now what I'm now gonna do is gonna practice what I've just been preaching there by actually go uh, recapping on what we've done today or what I said we do today. So I said we look at the learning outcomes. We did. We looked at the learning outcomes for the proposed class that I just went through with you there. And we looked at the reasons why as well it's important that we study uh, this topic as well. We looked at the cross-curricular links and how it's relevant not just to this maths class but to other classes too. We went, we went through a proposed lesson based on this and then we also at the end we recapped the learning outcomes and now here we are recapping excuse me, recapping on the plan for the day. So I hope you enjoyed this presentation. I hope you found it useful and informative. Um, and thank you very much for paying attention.